Well, the first thing you don't do is you don't short these stocks. So sometimes in attempt to predict the future or to understand the current price action, you have to look at the past. This is what the past looked like. They simply said don't short these stocks, point number one. Point number two, if you see a major price increase or decrease, it is not individual investors. It is simply institutional ones. You don't short these stocks. Okay, so if you don't, but I want to go back to the comment you just made. And we were just talking to JJ, obviously, about the mm -hmm. retail customer. But let's talk about the, this institutional hedge fund customer that you think is trading this stock. Mm -hmm. what, tell me what the conversation is behind the scenes. When you talk to some of your friends uh, on the street, in the trading community that are playing this, what do they tell you that they're thinking? They're thinking that volatility has declined significantly. Therefore, they could seek the leverage that they're not going to be getting from the traditional broker dealers. You and I both know that leverage was pulled back significantly after this first experience. So volatility's come down. They could explore leverage in other derivatives. And clearly the algorithms right now are recognizing the price momentum. They're attracted to it. And they are utilizing that momentum to align positions accordingly from the long side. But they think this is a trade. Do they, they think this is a trade or they think it's actually a fundamental it's a investment? It's a trade. Oh, my God. No. Fundamental and fundamental investment. I'm just no. asking this is a because trade. you go on Reddit, you go on Reddit <laughs> and there's a lot of folks out there who talk about this as if they are fundamental investors and that they are going long to the moon, as we know. Uh, with GameStop because they believe in the future of GameStop. And I'm not telling anybody not to believe in the future of GameStop, but of course there's a question of what the valuation of the future of GameStop will ultimately be. Well, I'm trying to figure out what the price of the moon actually is. Let me know when we, uh, we realize that so I know when we reach it that there'll be sellers. But I'm going to give you something very interesting over here. The article from Goldman Sachs new released price target for $175 a share for AMC is simply deleted it's diminished you cannot find this article anymore ask yourself why not to mention this particular part of the interview on cnbc was at the time when amc was around the levels of 17 18 19 dollars a share this is a very particular time frame very particular price action sure a lot of you might actually say that the 175 dollars a share price target from goldman sachs is simply 17 dollars and 15 cents if we adjust the reverse stock split but it's of my understanding. I simply cannot double check this because the article, as I mentioned, is deleted. But I didn't remember seeing or reading that this is the price target adjusted with the reverse stock split. But even if you get the adjusted 10 to 1 reverse stock split of $175 a share, you're still gonna get this similar price range at the levels when we saw this major explosion of uh, $17, $18 a share in 2021. Main point, you saw even Bitcoin was not at highs. Bitcoin was around 38, 39,000 hours under 40K later on, right before Bitcoin actually exploded to over 60,000. And the last part that was kind of slip in the very last momentum was, tell me where is the price of the moon so I will know when these people, individual investors, will be selling their shares. Everyone wants to know that. And I truly believe people here in the States are or were quite surprised to see that the market is actually open. Banks are closed, bonds are closed, but the market is open. We have a very interesting surprise looking towards Ortex numbers today. We had almost every indicator aside from cost to borrow, which is up double digits almost. So first of all, look at the short interest. Up to 11.62%. Also we have percentage of the float up it's currently 12.52% on loan. We also have shares on loan that are up same, 12.52%. 29 million shares of AMC currently on loan. You have utilization up 18%, currently at 64. And of course, the only indicator that is lagging, it's cost to borrow down to 2%, which is very, very sad, very cheap, which is down for the last seven days. 25 percent which if you try to make sense of the numbers there is a plenty of supply and not much demand meaning more and more individual investors and institutional are realizing that the expectations for you know the whole earnings and revenue and reporting and fundamental value 
will increase. How are you going to go about shorting or being negative on the security when you expect this positive catalyst coming? So this is why it's so cheap, in my opinion, that you see the cost to borrow falling. Because if we have plenty of negative catalysts, you know, strikes and, you know, something bad happening with the company, they will be heavy, concentrated, negative, short bets. So this means that they will increase the actual uh, demand for shares to be borrowed, to be shorted on the market. This is how I can actually explain that the only indicator, the only one that is going down is the cost to borrow. Everything else is, is up, right, for the last seven days period. Yeah.